welcome to the Arcade Saga. My name is Joachim Wiersma and uh, today I'm going to share a video that was on the list for quite a while. It's an update on my fertilizer, so my uh, basically my fertilizer uh, regime that I currently work with. Um, I did change it a little bit. I already had a uh, fertilizer video online, so I will put a link in. That is the older one and um, basically I did change. There's a new one new product and the rest is uh, just a little less products because I like to keep it as simple as possible even though you hear me quite uh, often talking about uh, pH and parts per million but still I try to make it as simple as possible so uh, um, but yeah I'm now growing in semi-hydro for about five years so I need to figure out the system that worked for me and worked for my plants so therefore I had a, a few more products just basically to use and to see if they would work obviously there was a, a, a process behind it a, a purpose and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but currently I have a, a uh, like I said a sort of a regime that I use which I think it really works and um, I thought it's time to share uh, this with you so it's basically an update and I wanted to say a thank you to uh, I need to speak Glenda Arkitz uh, 4291 she just recently asked the question what types of fertilizer I uh, use thank you Glenn because it inspired me to finally making this a uh, video and uh, I thought well I'm doing to uh, going to collect some plants we have a quite a nice uh, different uh, collection here a Miltonia, a Miltoniopsis, a Odontoglossum type, a Vanda here in the back and a Fires. So um, yeah more didn't fit in the screen but I think it looks nice and but I wanted to make a point with this uh, besides, it, uh, it, uh, besides the fact that it does look pretty I think uh, and that I use the same fertilizer for all my plants. I do use a little uh, more or a little less for some different plants. I will get to that in the end of this video or more to the end of this video I should say. But first of all let's talk about the products that I use. So I'm going to start with the, the most basic one um, and for me it's the most important one. This is new. I mentioned this in my other video. I uh, used the MSU fertilizer back then but I nowadays use the rain mix and I will make some pictures of the product so it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to see. But the rain mix is, is uh, almost the same as the MSU. Uh, if I believe there's a little bit more calcium and magnesium in it but the rest is, uh, is about the same. And this is for me fairly easy to get. It's from Akarna Arkets from Belgium and uh, it's very easy uh, in the Netherlands uh, to buy this from Belgium. So that's why I chose this one. I'm using this for now for two years I think. Something like that and it's, it's, it's a perfect project, uh, uh, product. It works wonders with my Arkets. And you don't need to grow them semi-hydroponically to use this fertilizer. It's just uh, basically an all-purpose fertilizer. Uh, it doesn't matter in what type of media you grow or mount or even like I do with my Avenas in phases. Uh, it works perfectly so uh, for all of those types of uh, methods of growing arc. So these, uh, this one has the NPK, so the, uh, that is the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Uh, you will hear that a lot, NPKs, and that is uh, those are macronutrients, and those are very important, but also the micro ones, the smaller ones, and uh, this fertilizer has them all, so that's why I love them. And uh, it's a well well based uh, product, and and yeah, obviously my orchids do uh, do well on them. They grow and and bloom well on this uh, this fertilizer. So this is the basic fertilizer that I uh, use quite often, the rain mix. And um, yeah, you want a, a good nitrogen uh, resource for, uh, because the nitrogen is helping for the new growth and the leaves and also uh, some studies say that it helps to get more flowers out of your uh, plant. So that's uh, why uh, uh, the nitrogen is very important. But also the calcium and magnesium, like I said earlier, this product, the Rain Mix, does contain more calcium, a little bit more and magnesium than the MSU, as far as uh, I know. But I still like to add a, a little bit of extra. So I also like to use this product. It's from Biobis. It's uh, called Calmac. 
there are different brands uh, that have the Calmac, like different brands have a filterizer, probably all are good or not. I don't know, but this is just what I use and I like, I really like the BioBiz as well. I used this product for years and it worked wonders, so I'm not changing it because I, uh, I know that my orchids uh, do like it as well. But this is uh, when I wanted to give, uh, want to give my plants a little bit of extra calcium magnesium. And it's especially when they are really growing big structures, big uh, blooming structures, but also big leaves. So the nitrogen helps to make the structures where the calcium does the cells, so it makes uh, them stronger and bigger. And the magnesium helps with, um, I need to say it right, chlorophyll, I'm sorry, I have a bit of difficulty pronounce it. And chlorophyll is um, uh, helping uh, with the, yeah, the photosynthesis, basically the, the system. So therefore um, you need the magnesium. So those three are very, very important. The rest are micronutrients and they all help with different parts. I'm not going to talk about them all today because otherwise this video will be way too long. But uh, that's why I like to use some extra um, Calmac now and again. And that is, like I said, when the orchids are growing. So if they are resting, then I shouldn't use it. But in my opinion, my uh, uh, environment, my orchids do not uh, basically take a rest. So therefore I uh, like can use it throughout the winter as well. But um, yeah, just look at your orchids. If they're growing, they can use a little bit of extra there. Then I have another fertilizer. Maybe you recognize this one because I, I'm doing a project on this one. It's called Argifit. And this is uh, a beautiful uh, fertilizer as well because I think I can see uh, also uh, some difference. I just recently started using it, if you don't know, if you didn't know the, the project on this one. But um, what I like on this one is that it has vitamins in it. Vitamin A, B1, B2, B3, B6 and B12. And I always had in the back of my mind something that I, I had a feeling that I was missing on vitamins for my orchids. So then uh, at a certain point I did get a great comment from um, uh, Tom Furby, but he helped me out and uh, because of the pH problem that I uh, did have, that's why I have a second video on this, but um, I'm not going to into it too much in the, in the details for this video. But it should help and it, it does raise the pH and makes it balanced f for, my, uh, for my current uh, setup. So that's a project of video on there. But when I did all of it and I saw the vitamins in it, I was like, well, if it works or not for the pH problem, that's okay because uh, I, I'm going to use it anyways because of the vitamins. So it should be a bonus if it works for the pH as well, but uh, I, like, I like the idea of uh, giving them vitamins. And I see more progress on uh, orchids that didn't do so well. So I think it's working, I think it's working. It's hard to tell for sure, of course, but uh, yeah, I think if you are growing for several years and you know your plants you s and you s introduce a different product, and you see difference, it can be bad ones, but it can also be good ones. And, and for now I see a uh, good improvement. So I think this one is really helping. So that is also one fertilizer that I use. This is actually a additive. So it's not really a fertilizer, the Calmac, but uh, the other two are, and I have more additives. So this is something you hear me talk about quite often. It's Elga Mic. It's a, it's a algae, it's a, uh, or a kelp solution. It's basically the same. There's a little bit difference, but it works the same. Um, they contain uh, natural hormones, and especially for the roots. Uh, orchids are really uh, liking this product, and it helps them to make more and more roots, and I, I really swear by it. I didn't use it for years, but now I, in uh, the last four or five years, I'm using it, and I saw a big, big difference when I use the product and then why when I didn't use it. So yeah, for me, this is a must have, a bio-based alga mic it's called, for the hormones and to uh, get them to grow. And I, I really enjoy uh, this product as well when I have new orchids, uh, just repotted, stressed orchids. Um, I really like this. Uh, my upcoming video on Wednesday will be a, a, a Miltonia, Miltoniopsis that is in stress and you will see me use this product as well because it works wonders. So that is that. 
And then we have the Biohaven. It's a humus uh, product and it helps to um, the plants make the fertilizer uh, a bit better up uptakeable for the plants, basically in a nutshell. There's a whole story behind it, but uh, for the sake of this video and the time-wise, I cannot go into it too much. But the Biohaven, this is a, also an additive that uh, I use, I think once every six months. So not that often, but then I use this because I grow inorganically and normally or uh, no, not normally but in bark and yeah, speaking of moss i'm not sure but especially in bark it has humid uh, in it already and also for the terrestrials if you uh, grow them in a sort of soil you already have the humus in there uh, but not if you grow inorganically like i do with uh, most of the times pumice so therefore i like to add this in as well and I think my plants really like it. And it, like I said, it helps them to, uh, to basically to eat the fertilizer, to uptake the fertilizer. So uh, a good product. And again from Biobis because I like the brand. Then we have, uh, it's also a fertilizer. This is the uh, NPK and then the 202020, I think. This is probably the most common one. You have it in all different uh, shapes and forms and colors and different brands. But this is the one that I can get uh, fairly easy. It's from the Orchidea Hoover. Maybe you heard of it, but that's a uh, orchid um, place, a nursery, sort of nursery here in the Netherlands. But anyhow, it's uh, their own brand. It's the 2020. And I like this, especially for the high amount of nitrogen in it, and especially for my Venas. They will give this, uh, get, get this quite a lot. And in spring and summer, I will give my other orchids a, uh, a little bit of this as well, just to hype up the nitrogen uh, source. So that is this one. Let's put it there. And then we are almost there, you guys. I have this one. This is the uh, calcium magnesium powder that you see me use in some videos, especially when we talk about, uh, I hope you can see it. It's a powdery form. There you go, with a little scoop in it. And it's the gray one. And if you have the gray one, it uh, means that you have magnesium in there as well. So once again, we have calcium, magnesium. Uh, plants, uh, orchids, I love it. They need it for the structures like we just uh, discussed. But I use this uh, in powder form and I put one scoop in my uh, reservoirs to keep the pH healthy because I don't floss my orchids. And thereby I found uh, via the hard way, <laughs> That at a certain um, after a certain uh, time let's say five up to seven months the ph in the reservoir starts to drop and it goes very very low i have uh, one uh, one time i had a reading of 4.2 so very very acidic it's it's way way too much and uh, i had a heck of a lot of uh, struggles with uh, containing the roots on the orchids because i had a, a this ph problem once I found the problem, that was after a year, a year and a half, I adjusted it and my orchids finally started to grow again and maintain their roots and start to make this beautiful spikes again. So yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, I was very happy back in the days that I finally, finally found it. But I'm using this, like I said, uh, uh, mainly for a, uh, for hype up the pH in, in the reservoirs. And it's also beneficial, so that's an extra bonus because it's uh, like, a, like we said, a calcium magnesium powder. So that's uh, basically what I uh, like to use as well. I know that in America you will have the Garden Lime, for example, but I cannot find the same brand, but this powder works the same. I almost did forget that I also have this product from Biobis. It's uh, a pH down product because I like to adjust my pH, the fertilized water, and therefore I uh, like to use this product product here and it's uh, called bio ph from biobis once again and it works wonders and um, you it does go a very very long way you only need just a few drops to drop the ph in your water uh, if you like to adjust it and i do like uh, like to do that so that's also a product that i uh, use and then the last thing the last additive that i like to use from time to time it's called TNC Mycore Hydro. And it looks uh, like this. I have this, uh, all of these products are also linked in my video description. So if you uh, want to know more about it, please check that. 
and this is it also contains a little bit of uh, seaweed so it also contains the, the natural hormones but it has even more uh, um, hormones in there it also has the humic acid in there the humid so the bio the bio base we just discussed is also a little bit of that in there and more beneficial um, hormones and, and, and things in there I hope you can see it otherwise I will put it in a picture but you can check them all one by one but I uh, it's it's too much for this video but I like to use this and it's also is uh, in the description of the product if you uh, search for it I th I'm not sure if it's also in English but who knows um, but anyhow, uh, because we grow uh, in semi-hydroponic, in a uh, inorganic uh, setup, you will have some, uh, yeah, you basically miss on some uh, basically natural elements that are in the soil. And to compensate a little bit uh, in a nutshell, uh, that is this project doing with some extras, with some extra uh, hormones like we just discussed. And this is, I only use this as well uh, once every six months. So just a little bit. Once again, because I don't flush, this is in the pots and it helps to create a nice little micro uh, climate basically in the pots. So, uh, and this is very beneficial. The bacteria in here are very beneficial for that. So far, the only one that I see using this as well is uh, uh, Matthew from Hello Plant Lovers. He's a, he, using a, he is using a similar product uh, even though he's growing in a bark and sphagnum moss as far as I know so but anyhow this is made specifically for a uh, growing semi hydroponically so uh, I think that is also very beneficial so yeah um, those are the products that I currently use still quite a few once again I think it looks more difficult than it is so if you are a little bit overwhelmed by it uh, well, you can always ask uh, me some questions if you want and just basically the rain mix if you start out growing orchids, start with the rain mix and you have uh, pretty much uh, everything covered already. So you could st uh, uh, start with that easily and have great successes with your orchids. But I like to go for the best potential. So I like to see if I can grow my flower spikes on my orchids better, if I can have secondary spikes on them. If I can have more flowers on them, if I can have stronger structures on them, uh, if I can have keikis, several keikis, this vendor has currently seven keikis on it, uh, for example, and the one the fires in the back, I, I try to contain all the leaves in there, and it is this is the second uh, spike on it. Just to give an, a general idea why I use different products and why I don't stick only with the rain mix or a good fertilizer, and the rain mix is just uh, the brand that I use. Like I said, because uh, the the I want to get the best out of my plants. Plus, I grow nowadays for uh, almost five years, same hydroponically, and that's a different system. It's a different system than uh, working with bark and sphagnum moss, so a different approach. And therefore, I use some different products. I hope that does make sense. So that's said and done. Uh, like I said, I have quite a display here, uh, a beautiful display. I hope. <laughs> I do think so. Um, this Miltonia, this Miltoniopsis, and this Odontoglossum type, and that fire is in the back, and this one are, are getting uh, basically the same product that we just saw. I don't make any difference, uh, differences. The only thing that uh, my Vanna doesn't get is this powder calcium, because it doesn't make sense, because I water my uh, Vannas differently than the other ones. My Vannas do not have a reservoir, I grow them in phases, I water them every week, uh, uh, for about two days in summer. In winter, if it's very cold, I only uh, water them for about one day. But I try to water them for two days, uh, just uh, put some water in a, in a vase, and then I'm uh, uh, emptying the vase uh, after two days. So therefore I don't need a pH stabilizer in powder form. But I do use the uh, bio pH down. Uh, generally speaking, I like to fertilize uh, after water my plants with a pH around 6, 6.3. So to get there, most of the times I need just a little bit of pH down. Especially when I use the calcium, like we discussed earlier, calcium has a tendency to uh, just raise your pH and, and this uh, brings it down at the level that you want, obviously. 
but one tip go slow on this because it's fairly strong you only need a few drops and it will uh, drop already the ph so that's uh that's uh, a mainly uh, a big uh, a, a bit of a difference there in a fertilizer and the product that it use but for the rest it's the same and the amount is also the same not on my vanda but for i'm not talking for the plants that have a reservoir the only ones that do get more fertilizer are my cybidiums and my catecidum types so uh, those do get the vanda water and my vanas uh, i fertilize in summer around 250 up to 300 parts per million uh, sometimes 350 but it's it's around 300 and in winter if if they really stop growing, uh, I, sl I slow it down a, a bit and then I'm going down to 150 up to 200 parts per million. So I'm really watching my plants. Well, this one is working on three uh, spikes. One is on the keiki. I don't know if you can see it over there, but and it has two there. So this one needs to feed. And then I'm going up to uh, 300, something like that. Some people I know uh, go way over that. Uh, they use 500, 600. Yeah. Maybe you noticed I'm a strong believer of um, weekly, weekly. I don't, I don't want to overdo with the fertilizer. And then of course uh, the amount, the parts per million per watering per season for uh, the ones in the semi hydroponics setup. Well, like I said, besides the cymbidiums and the catecidiums, those get the leftovers from the vendas. So those got uh, quite some extra uh, parts per million, some fertilizer. The rest is, uh, well, in summer it's around 80 up to 100 uh, yeah mainly it's it's uh, around 80 parts per million sometimes a little bit lower sometimes a little bit higher and in winter it's only about somewhere between 30 and 50 uh, on warmer days sometimes you have some warmer days in winter then it may get, get up to 80 again but generally speaking on the colder days uh, 30 up to 50 parts per million and in summer uh, 80 up to maximum 100 and that is what they get in their uh, reservoirs so that's not much once again i am a strong believer of uh, weekly weekly uh, uh, feeding your orchids so just a uh, just a little bit in there and let them uh, search for the fertilizer let them take what they want just try to uh, put in there everything that they, uh, they might need at a certain uh, point in their lives to grow uh, beautiful structures like I said earlier on. So that's uh, the amount of fertilizer that I uh, like to use. Firstly, trying to find an article, but I didn't, but maybe you have, uh, that um, shows us how much fertilizer even is possible for an orchid to uptake or for a root. Of course, if the root is longer, it can get more water and more fertilizer, but really, I'm really curious to know how much fertilizer can go in one root. I, I, think, I think sometimes you may overdo it a little bit. I did that. I'm just saying that it's my opinion. I'm saying maybe I, I under fertilize them and maybe I, I, I'm sorry, maybe I could give them a little bit more. But um, yeah, I, th I think uh, overall we are trying to fertilize them a little bit too much because we want too strong structures of growth, too much blooms. Yeah, that's just my opinion. So I keep it down. And I think, uh, my, yeah, my vendors do well. I don't see uh, any uh, signs that I need more fertilizer. If I have a bit of a sign, I might have some lighter leaves. So I need to uh, give them a little bit more magnesium. That's the only thing that happens from time to time to me. But that's, yeah, like I said, the only thing so far. For the rest, it's all the same. So yeah, this Miltonia gets the same amount of fertilizer as my Miltoniopsis. And as did on Odontoglossum type. Because otherwise, you guys, uh, just to be honest, I would be uh, watering and being busy with watering uh, at least one day, if, I think even more. Because I grow Cattleyas, I grow Phenoliopsis, uh, Terrestrials, I have my Jewel Orchids, uh, I also have um, Masdevelias, for example. Well, we can go on a, a little while, but so a lot of uh, different varieties. And uh, I found that if I stick with this, uh, amount of parts per million uh, they do well you can you you have seen my videos probably about my miltoniopsis my vanilliopsis and so and i think overall they are doing well so i'm sticking with it and that is because i my arc is growing semi hydroponically they have a they have a reservoir so there's always some 
some fertilizer around them and and that's why i think i don't need high amounts besides i'm not sure how much they can uptake like we just uh, discussed but also i like to uh, look at it as they have a little bay around their roots so that i like to use different types of fertilizers just a little bit and just putting it in there and then the archer can decide what it needs uh, at that certain moment so maybe it needs a little bit more calcium or maybe a little bit more nitrogen for example i'm not completely sure but i i'm sure that the plant knows what it needs and it's my job to make sure it is there and it e is easy obtainable for the orchid so that's basically how i look at it and that is why i always use my meters my parts per million meters because i don't want to overdo it i don't want to have salt builds up because i don't flush so i keep it low as well that's that's uh, one of the things of course like i just said i don't want to overfeed them and i don't flush and also um the pH, because you have different uh, ranges of pH that make certain fertilizers uh, easily obtainable for the plant. So therefore I like to vary a little bit. I like to uh, keep my uh, pH around 7, 7.5 with this and I lower uh, my pH when I'm starting to watering uh, around 6, uh, 6.3 and that is uh, once again this product. So then uh, gradually it will go up again after a week or so something like that i'm not completely sure and then i water them again with uh let's say 6.0 ph and i'm going to lower it again they can uptake their fertilizer that are in that range of ph obtainable and it goes slowly up again and then uh, a week has passed by again so for example i know that the calcium and magnesium are uh I, uh, well it's it's in the higher end of the six so 6.2 up to 6.5 it's uh, very good for the uh, calcium for the plants to uptake the calcium and then you have certain uh i think it's the iron on top of my head uh it, it likes a bit of a lower uh ph I, I think around six or even a little less lower so that's why i like to vary between uh, the ph's and I think I'm doing well. It's never, it's hard to tell if you completely do it right, but anyhow, it should work fine because I have a fairly, uh, fairly large orchids as well and they bloom all the time. So I think uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on the right track, sort of. <laughs> but anyhow, this is so far um, the fertilized video, a video that I needed to do, I think, uh, because it's very important. It, it tells so much about uh, what you will see and find here on my uh, orchid channel and it probably will make more sense uh, with, uh, with other videos as well. Um, but as usual, if you have any questions, please leave, the, let, uh, leave them in the comment section below. Also, if you have uh, some opinions about the products, maybe you have another different product that works really well for you, please let, uh, let us know in the comment section because it's, I think it's very nice for me, but also for other people uh, to read the comments and to uh, collect as much information as you can, because uh, all of us uh, know so much so well uh, on, on how to grow these orchids as good as we can in different climates, etc. So please uh, put it in there if you want to. For now, I just uh, wanted to say thank you so much for watching and I really, really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.